you know, we send people off to war, uh, potentially to die for this country. And so we as civilians, as a country, need to understand what we're truly demanding of them. This project began back in 1998, so I've been doing this for about 16 years, and it was really inspired by a fire that we had in our house in Washington, D.C. Everything we had was destroyed, and I had no military connections before this, I had no interest in history before this, but when we lost all of our family memorabilia, it just made me realize how important it is to preserve our past, and I started talking with veterans just by coincidence, and so many of them said, oh, you know, I threw all my letters away. And I was just so shocked that they would do that. So Carol, a DC-based author and historian, decided to do something to save the letters which provide the most intimate records of war from the perspective of the men and women who actually fight them. I wrote to Dear Abby, who uh, has a syndicated column across the country, and she wrote a lot about veterans' issues. And I said, could you do a column encouraging your readers to send in any war letters they might have so we can preserve them? And it's like the floodgates opened. We just got thousands and thousands of responses from people. This project has preserved over 100,000 letters, ranging from the Revolutionary War all the way to the War on Terror. Being a private organization really made this a much more personal project, both for me and for the people who are sending in letters. They're not sending it into some government bureaucracy. They're sending it to people who you know, respond to them personally, who read every letter. Carroll recently donated his collection to Chapman University, and the university is in the process of digitizing the letters and making them more readily available to the public. Chapman has also incorporated the letters into their educational studies. The university's goal is to become the nation's most prominent archive of personal wartime correspondences. The history that these letters capture uh, is incredible, whether they're written from Gettysburg or from Quezon or Antietam or any of these major battles. And they humanize the men and women who wrote them. So we no longer see them as just soldiers, airmen, marines, and sailors, but as somebody's spouse or child or parent or best friend. We have a letter by a young man who's inside a ship at Pearl Harbor as the bombs are falling, and he's trapped in the Ford engine room. And so he's writing to his sister, like, you know, it's been, it's 9.05 a.m. Sunday morning, the bombs been dropping for an hour, uh, we're trapped here in the ship. And you look at the upper right-hand corner, it says December 7th, 1941, USS New Orleans. Like, I got chills when I first saw that because here he is literally, you know, in the eye of the storm. We as civilians who, you know, elect certain leaders and, you know, rally behind a war need to know what these troops are going to have to sacrifice and give up. You know, the more that we have a sense that these are actual individuals that we're sending off to fight, I think it's better for the entire country, it's better for the military, it's better for all of us.